We present a continuum mechanics-based simulation of dry sand. We extend the material point method with the Dracker Prager yield condition, which models the plastic deformation and internal friction of sand. Our algorithm is able to capture sand behavior in fine detail, as well as to simulate energetic scenes. We compare results to those of Narain et al. Although their method performs faster, notice how our method avoids the stair-like artifacts and better captures the flowing nature of dry sand. MPM proceeds by first transferring quantities from particles to grid. This is followed by force computation and velocity updates on the grid. Finally, transpect to the particles. We extend this final step. During grid to particle transfer, particle positions, velocities, and deformation gradients are updated. After the update of the deformation gradients, we apply a projection step. This projection captures the material's plastic behavior. Before the detailed explanation of our plasticity model, we demonstrate our results on a simulated hourglass. This diagram illustrates principal stress space in two dimensions. Pressure increases along the diagonal line from right to left. In the blue region, the material experiences only tension, and in the green region, only compression. In our formulation, stress space is divided into feasible and infeasible regions by yield surface. The yield surface for the Dracker Prager model is a cone centered on the pressure axis. Note that the feasible region is confined to the compression region since dry sand has no strength under tension. The column friction model on inclined plane restricts tangential force proportional to normal force. The stress analogy restricts shear proportional to pressure, which leads to the characteristic conical shape. In this illustrative example, we have plotted the principal stresses for several candidate stress configurations. Green candidates are feasible while blue and red candidates violate the Dracker Prager yield condition. The stress configurations on or inside the cone are feasible and lead to purely elastic response with no plastic deformation. The blue stress configurations outside the yield surface produce both plastic deformation and elastic response. These stress configurations are projected back to the yield surface. To avoid volumetric plastic components, projection must be orthogonal to the pressure axis. The red stress configurations are in tension. Since dry sand does not support tension, these configurations produce only plastic deformation. These configurations are projected back to the origin, which corresponds to zero stress. The final configuration is our elastic stress, which we use to compute our forces. We can compute the elastic components of our deformation gradients by inverting our constitutive model. The video illustrates the projection process during simulation. Each dot represents a particle. Green particles are within the yield surface and are not projected. Blue particles are projected to the surface of the cone, while red ones are projected to the tip. Yellow dots represent the location stress configurations are projected to. Since we sort the singular values by convention, our plots do not produce points above the pressure line. Hardening is driven by the total amount of projection the particle experiences over time. This amount controls the aperture of the cone through a hardening curve, with higher angles leading to stronger materials. The aperture is indirectly controlled by the friction angle parameter the effect of which is demonstrated in these videos. The right choice of Young's modulus is crucial for capturing sand behavior, as low values lead to non-physical response. We compare our simulation results to a real-world footage. Notice how the simulation is able to capture the avalanche instability occurring during pouring sand into a pile. The APIC transfer provides stability to our simulations as opposed to the traditional flip scheme. No sand simulation is complete without sandbox and beach scenes.